Restoration Christian Ministries presents Word to Inspire You. A time for sharing the things that will bring encouragement to your hearts and enlightenment to your minds. Inspirational words to keep you focused on the things of the kingdom of God and his Christ. Join us now and enjoy Words to Inspire You with your host, Pastor John Bazemore. Hello, everyone. This is Pastor B, and I welcome you again to Words to Inspire You. This is the day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice, and we are going to be glad in it. I am deeply excited about this subject matter today because here, this is what's going on right now. I believe a lot of us are really into believing that God is going to do some things for us. But I was talking to my son today, and you know, we really have to understand and have to know how God operates. But I want to say this, there is no way that you are looking for something really good from the Lord without it costing you something. I want to tell you a story about how Words to Inspire You actually got started. You know, it was it was a few years ago, maybe about 10 years ago now, and a friend of mine who has gone on to be with the Lord now, he came to my uh, ministry and this guy rebuked me strongly. And I normally don't take too kindly to people talking to me the way that he did, but he rebuked me, rebuked me strongly. And here's what the rebuke was about. He knew that God had called me to media ministry and he knew that I was procrastinating and he just really got into me pretty good. And from that was birth of this, what I'm doing right now. Now I got started on it and I didn't want to get started, but first of all, because I didn't have the type of equipment that I wanted to have, and I have a deep sense of doing things in excellence. And so I used that excuse, just like I know some of you do sometimes. I used that excuse for not doing what God had called me to do. I procrastinated. I was talking to my son today, and I was telling him, I said, you know, son, you know what procrastination is? What it really is? It's disobedience in slow motion. Saints of God, listen. You would never get to that place where God wants you to be unless you fully understand that to get the things that God has promised you, it's really going to cost you something. You know, in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 24, it's a story of David and something that he had done. He, he numbered the people when God told him not to, and a pestilence came on the land. So David was looking uh, to go before the Lord. And one thing I can say about David, even when he messed up, David knew how to go before the Lord, lay before God, and just repent. But many of us don't do that. We try to justify it, or we, uh, we say that God promised us something and it didn't happen, so we walk away from the promise, or it gets too difficult, and we don't want to go through that. Saints, that's not, listen, you, you can write on Facebook all you want, and you can decree and declare and blab and gab and, you know, name it and claim. You can do all those things all you want, but if you do not understand that there is a cost that you have to pay, a cost that comes with getting anything valuable from God, you will never understand. So here's what happened with David. So David went to this king, Arunara, I think his name is. I don't really know how to pronounce it, but he went to this king and he asked for the threshing floor because he wanted to make a sacrifice to God in repentance of what he had done. So the king, in his generosity, he offered this threshing floor to David along with the things that he needed to make the sacrifice for nothing. And here's was, here was David's response. I cannot come before the Lord, you know, to make a sacrifice for something really that he had done wrong unless it cost me something. And this is the attitude that we have to have. We've got to really understand that there is a price that we have to pay. So here's my question to you. How much time are you willing to invest in the, God, in the promise that God made to you? I mean, if it takes one year, two years, five years, 10 years, or like Abraham, 25 years, how much time are you willing to invest in what God has promised you? When I was talking to my son today, one of the things that I said to him was that many times one of the problems that people have with receiving from God is because they just don't believe that God is able to do what he promised he would do. They, they just don't believe that. And here's the thing. You've got to understand there are two, two real qualities that God look for, looks for when he's dealing with us. That's diligence and discipline. And, you know, without 
of both of these, you're really not going to get to that place where God desires you to be. So now we, we really got to understand the difference and how they operate. So now when God is coming to you, he expects you, of course, he expects you to operate in excellence. He expects you to follow the uh, plans and the details that he had given you. When God called Moses to build him a tabernacle, I want you to get this. When he called Moses to build the tabernacle, now all of this was in preparation uh, to going into the promise. And so God had made them a promise, but of course, because of their disobedience, they spent a lot of time in the wilderness. So God, um, he, he called Moses up to the mount and he gave him specific instructions on what he wanted to do, how he wanted that tabernacle to look where he wanted it to be placed, you know, what he wanted inside of it, what he wanted outside of it. He didn't leave anything uh, for Moses to try to add to it or take away from it. So God is very specific. So we've got to understand when we go to God, we have to be as specific uh, to him as he is to us. So now what, what God did was to tell Moses exactly uh, what he expected of him. And when God gives you a promise, you know, he may not give you, give you all of the details right up front, but I will assure you the things that God has promised you, he's going to make good on it. So what I want to do now, I'm going to come back in a second, but when I come back, I want to talk to you about the difference between diligence and discipline and how God looks at both of those things and what he expects when he makes a promise to us. Be right back. Words to inspire you. We'll be right back. Hello everyone, this is Pastor B and I welcome you to this broadcast. I pray that these broadcasts have been a blessing to you and if they have, you can show your appreciation by one, becoming a subscriber and two, liking the broadcast so that others can see and never want to miss an episode of Words to Inspire You. God bless you. We now return to Words to Inspire You. So now let's look at what the Word of God means when it talks about diligence. The Word of God says in the book of Hebrews 11, 6, but without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe, listen, that he is and that he rewards those who what? Diligently seek him. This word diligence there is almost a, a sign of worship. There, there's a, a level of reverence that you seek him, but you, you're searching out and you're seeking him diligently and in an excellent way. You see, I don't care what you're doing. You've got to always have the mindset that you are going to give God your best. It doesn't matter what everyone else is doing. It doesn't matter how everyone else is approaching the situation. You know, that doesn't matter. You have, you have got to understand, first of all, that the one thing that God requires of us is faith. We We've got to believe, first of all, that he is able to do what he's promised he would do. But then he requires up in quite requires us almost in a form of worship to, to search him out, you know, re, just leaving the things behind, you know, all of the distractions and all of the naysayers. You've got to be willing to uh, push those things aside and approach God in the best way and the most excellent way and the most worshipful way that you can. Because see, if you mess around with people, people will have you jacked up. How many of you know what I'm talking about? People will have you absolutely jacked up because here's the thing. There are some people that don't want to believe and then they get upset when you want to believe, but you've got to be willing to, to come before God in excellence. Now I was talking about this program, uh, words to inspire you, you know, for, for years I stopped doing this program and listen, I'm, I'm, I'll be the first one to admit I was in error. I stopped doing this program because I said, I don't have the right type of equipment that I want. And uh, so I use it as an excuse. But here's the thing. When you are searching out God, when God has made you a promise, it does not matter what you have. You've got to be willing to use what you have in your hands. And God will honor that. But see, sometimes we use excuses for not having the things or the equipment or the gifts or whatever it may be that we 
uh, we believe or we feel we should have. So we use that as a reason to back away from what God has promised. But listen, God will honor you when you honor him. So you've got to be willing to, to grab a hold of what you you have, even though it may be a webcam. Listen, you get that webcam, you get you some quality, quality lights, you get your quality mic, and you go for that thing. You put your everything into it because this is showing God that you are serious about what he has promised you. And I told you before, as I told my son, you can tell the seriousness of a person by how soon they quit after they were given a promise. Because everybody is not going to stick to it. I, I promise you that everybody will not stick to it. But the diligent ones will not only uh, believe what God says, but they're going to take what they have and they're going to present it to him in the most excellent way. That's the difference between Cain and Abel. They, they both made a sacrifice, but Abel made a sacrifice of diligence. He gave God his best and Cain gave God what he wanted to. And see, listen, I pray that you are not guilty of that. I pray that you're not one of the ones right now that's waiting for a breakthrough, but you are not giving God what he requires. You are not willing to pay that price because you are too concerned about who's watching you or you may even be concerned about being wrong and looking like a fool in front of your friends and family. And if that is actually your concern, you are not ready for the promises of God. You are not ready. You've got to be willing to stand all by yourself. And listen, the other piece of that is discipline. Now, discipline is a funny thing. You, you got to, and people need to understand this about God. Discipline means this. That there is a set of rules and regulations that you agree to follow. And there, there are stipulations and there are consequences if you don't follow those things. Now, the, when Jesus, when Jesus went and, and called his disciples. Now he, he didn't he didn't call you know he didn't call them the diligent ones. He called them disciples, the disciplined ones, which means this you are required to to do things a certain way, and if you do not do that, there are consequences that come along with it to make sure you are abiding by what you are supposed to. You know, the the one thing that we are we talk about a lot, we talk about blessings, but we don't want to talk about the things that happen if we don't do the things that God requires. We talk about we don't want to talk about the curses that we can bring upon ourselves by walking in disobedience. We don't want to talk about that because we feel like that's not the nature of God. I'm not even going to go there with you because from Genesis to Revelation, you see over and over again that there are things that God requires. And if you don't, there are consequences. If you don't believe me, just look at the life of the children of Israel. They could have, they, it took them, you know, um, some 40 years, you know, that a journey that could have taken them a month or two, but because they were not willing to sacrifice, to be diligent and to be disciplined in that process, they were not able to receive the promise. Only the ones that were born in the wilderness were able to go into the promised land besides uh, Joshua, Joshua and Caleb. And don't, don't let it be you believers. Listen, push those things aside. People will talk. You know, you, okay, sure you might be laughed at. So, so what? What does the word of God say? For the joy that was set before him. It says, look at Jesus. For the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross. He despised the shame. The, of course, there was shame associated with that. His own family called him lunatics. His friends called him lunatics. You know, the, his own brethren didn't believe in him. They were trying to get him to go someplace where he, they knew the Jews were looking to kill him. But listen, if you are not willing to be disciplined and diligent in the things of God, you are not ready for the blessings and the promises and, and the outpouring of God. You're not ready. You, you've got to be willing to be different than everybody else. Set yourself aside. Be that one that no matter what people do, when everybody else quits, you know, it doesn't matter about being uh, the the, um, the the hare, you know, or the, the rabbit, some people call him, and the turtle. You know, you, you get this fast start, and you start out real good, and you know, the next, the next week you're on to something else. The next week after that, God says something different. You never finish anything. You never finish anything. Believers, listen, you've got to learn to start something be diligent in the process, be disciplined in what God has told you to do until you get to your expected end because somebody needs your testimony. They need you not to quit. They, they, they are dependent on you to hang in there, to be disciplined, to be diligent because they know if God will do it for you, 
he will do it for them. So again, I thank you for giving me this time with you. I love you so much and I just so enjoy spending this time with you, sharing the things that the spirit of the living God gives me to share with you. And my prayers until next week that the Lord God will bless you real good. I love you and be blessed. Thank you for joining Words to Inspire You with your host, Pastor John Baysmore. Words to Inspire You is a production of Restoration Christian Ministries Incorporated. Teaching the word, living by faith, growing in grace. We thank you for watching this broadcast and pray that you will continue to partner with us. We invite you to join us again for our next program as we present Words to Inspire You, a time of refreshing.